Welcome a lot of fishing TV. Today we'll be talking about some of the gear that I use for flathead catfish and channel catfish. I know I've been getting a lot of requests lately about what I use for channel catfish or you know catfish in general. So today this will be that day that I'll be showing you guys what I use and what type of rigs that I like to use when I'm catfishing. So stay tuned. First and foremost, we'll be talking about the lines that I use for fishing. Okay, here's 50 pound line. You have 65 pound braided line by Power Pro. Um, you have 50 pound monofilament line. You have 20 pound monofilament line. You have 12 pound monofilament line and 30 pound monofilament line. We're gonna go back all the way over here to the 50 pound line, which most of the time is only used for lead 65 pound braided line by power pro i also use spider wire stealth this is most likely used for main line we go to 50 pound again um i actually like eagle claw line um i use these for different reasons this 50 pound line and the 50 pound line omniflex one is a tad bit thicker than the other which the omniflex is thicker than this so depending on where i'm fishing i will use like that's a lot that's really rocky i will use this if it's more of a sandy bottom, then I will use 20 pound monofilament that I most likely use for main line. And sometimes lead line, depending on what size pound line I use, but for the most part, this will always be a main line. This will always be one of those lines I use for the lead line to the, well, not the lead line, but the line to the sinker. If I'm using line like 20 pound monofilament as my lead line. Last but not least, 30 pound which most likely will be a lead line if I'm using lines from 50 pound braided to 40. And some of the swivels. Now this is a three-way swivel, which obviously used for three-way rigging. Most likely this would be used for Carolina rigging, slip sinker rigs, the Santee rig, the beads to protect the integrity of the knots of which you may tie, you know, depending on which line you use, but it really don't matter. These always help the knot from you know getting frayed up real bad egg sinkers that i use on occasions most of the time i like to use egg sinkers in like ponds and lakes smaller ponds and smaller lakes this is a dipsy i like to use these most definitely i like to use these in rocky spots just the design and shape kind of helps keep it from getting stuck in between rocks or whatnot but I like to use this a lot and it helps me cast a lot better than most. Next is the bank sinker, which is pretty much one of my top three sinkers that I like to use a lot. This is an actual size two and a half. Um, I use these pretty much for most occasion, but most definitely when I'm fishing in sandy areas, just to keep it still. That's why they got the lines around there, like the lines and edges. That way it can kind of sit flat, but yet roll if it need to and sometimes stop. That's what it's designed for. Um, pyramid sinkers are my favorite sinkers by far. There haven't been a sinker that I found that I love so much more than these. I do not like to use these in rocky areas at all because the way these are shaped, they got a tendency to get locked up under a rock or something and, or a tree branch or something or twist around it, which always been an epic fail. But for the most part, these are my favorite when, it's, when I'm using these in fast current uh, water and stuff like that rivers streams and you know bigger bodies of water like the lake but these are go-to this sinkers flat sinkers or whichever you may you uh, whichever you may want to call them um i definitely like using these on flat surfaces um i don't use them as much but i do like them for the casting ability and that's pretty much it's a random thing it just depends on how i'm feeling and no roll sinkers which are number two on my list of favorite sinkers to use now i when i use these sinkers i don't go to i always use from size two to five five obviously heavier i don't necessarily use eight ounces because most of the times when i'm using these i'm pretty sure the water is not going to be you know moving that fast i know better if it's super fast most of the time i won't fish because it's kind of hard to fish in extreme fast current water so these are the sizes that i use especially when i'm using slip sinker rig definitely so these are the sinkers and the swivels and bees that i use when i'm catfishing and by the way most of these are matter of fact every single last one of these can be used for flatheads blues and channel cats really all right now here we have my hooks this hook right here is a 
Eagle Claw C Circle Hook. I mainly like using these for channel cats. Um, this hook is very strong. Um, I do like how the the loop is a little bit more, not narrow, but a little bit more wider and it comes out more. That gives it a nice hook set in the corner of the mouth. Um, this is a size seven. This is a size seven knot Gamagatsu hook, which is by far my favorite hooks, period. I mean, these things are just so diverse. It's it's not the best hook all the time, but these are my favorite. Um, I like to use the seven knot hook, the eight knot hook, depending on circumstances, I may drop down to a five, but most of the times I'm only using these for flathead. Um, if I do use a smaller size like three, two, and one channel catfish, but these are great hooks right here. Here you have a, a nice 10 knot, 10 catfish hook, which has a downfall for me. Um, and a pro, but I'm going to talk about the downfall. The downfall is the hook can be too thick. Now, most of the time I like to use um, cut bait. And sometimes even the cut bait is just too fragile for this thick hook. It You know, you can cast and it just rip right off. And live bait, that's a no-go. I would not use this for live bait, none whatsoever. But the pro is the shape of the hook and how it's designed. So if you was to actually use any kind of live bait or thick bait, that pocket right there is deep enough to sit that bait down in there. On the hook to where you can have so much hook exposure. That's the that's the actual pro of it. So we can go on to the next hook. This is a Matsuo uh, sickle hook. I usually use these for smaller channel cats, nothing major. If I'm just trying to get a few eater size, or possibly if I'm just out there just trying to catch a multiple uh, range of fish. But most likely this would be used for channel catfish. Here's a true turn one knot hook that I use for channel catfish. Actually, these are phenomenal hooks. Phenomenal when it comes to catfish, channel catfish. See, when you cast, when you're reeling back your, uh, when you're reeling the fish in, this hook has a tendency, tendency to twist. That's exactly why it's designed like this. So when you're reeling that in, it spins. And once it spins, it gets a better hook set. Here you have an Eagle Claw 2 odd bait holder hook, which are by far <laughs> one of the most diverse hooks you can possibly buy. Very strong, lasts forever. I got hooks that's been sitting there rusted out. I guarantee when I sharpen them up, back to new. Here you have a, um, an octopus hook, two eye octopus hook, channel catfishing most definitely. And then you have six and a seven eye uh, octopus hook. And all these are by Gamagatsu, by the way. Um, I like to use the seven eye for flatheads. And most of the time when I'm using these hooks, I'm using them for cut bait. If I'm using live bait, I would go to an 8 eye, but I don't have an 8 eye for this because I don't really use these hooks much when I'm flathead fishing. But depending on circumstances in which you may be fishing, J hooks do have a tendency to work a little tad bit better than the circle hooks, especially if uh, the fish tends to be less aggressive with the bait, which I have had that many times before. Here you have treble hooks, channel catfish. I will never use this for nothing but channel catfish. Now, dough balls, homemade dough bait. Um, you can have dip tubes like the one you see here that I use uh, when I'm using my Primo uh, stink bait. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you guys this. This is some good stuff. This actually do works very well. I don't recommend it river fishing, but I do recommend it if you fish in lakes and ponds. This will work phenomenally well. I know because there's it's almost gone and I had it for about a year but at the end of the day I don't use it much but I recently used it in the last few days and it works very well so primo blood super sticky dip bait very stinky okay now here we have kale hooks now I don't use kale hooks much um which means I will be using them more often. Um, these are also Gamagatsu Kill. Now, these hooks are actually said to be a better hook than circle hooks. Dun, dun, dun. Well, I don't know. I have to test that out for myself. But other than that, this is a hook that I will try um, very soon. For those who do use Kell hooks, this is the hook that I would like to get information on from you guys. So this is something you can tell me about and I would like to definitely use these which I'll probably use them sometime this week when I go flathead fishing um I heard that it's really good for live bait because of how uh the bait sits down up in here and you still got a lot of exposed hooks so if that's true let me know and I'll be glad to check it out which I will for sure um peg floats I use these 
most definitely when I'm using Santee rig. Um, I like the Santee rig because it's actually it's actually a rig to help you get better performance. A lot of people don't use it because we are you understand the tradition of fishing. Um, we can get caught in that, but believe it or not, this is a rig that's been out for a long time, and it actually works real good. And this is the float that I would use when doing a Santee rig. And then here you have your traditional bobber. I like to use these when I'm fishing for small channel catfish or if I'm fishing for bluegill or if I'm fishing for a small uh, largemouth bass just for the fun of it. I mean, bait fishing with this thing is pretty much the go-to for me. I use slip sinker, uh, well not slip sinker, but slip bobbers. But for the most part, this is it. And this is the gear that I use. Now what I'm going to end up showing you guys next is some of the actual rigs. Stay tuned. Okay, this is the first rig. This is called the Santee rig. This is actually one of my favorite rigs to use, even though I use it less and probably due to the fact that there's a lot going on here <laughs> to most people's eyes. All right, here you have your hook with the lead line and three inches, here you have your hook. Let's do this over. Here you have your hook. Three inches up, there's a knot. Then you have your peg float. And then all the way up, you have your swivel, B egg sinker or slip sinker and you have your main line now everything will be demonstrated on these on all these rigs with 20 pound line so how this rig works okay if you're using cut bait this is perfect or even night crawler this is the perfect rig why because what this rig does is here's your weight it sits at the bottom and when it hits the water this float brings it up and your bait will be floating above the ground. So if catfish are swimming at the bottom like this, the way their eyes is placed, it's kind of up part of the head. They will see that and they will come for the strike, which makes it more aggressive. And this has always been a good rig to use, even when flathead fishing. So this is one of the rigs that I like to use a lot. And we'll go on to rig number two. Okay, this next rig is the slip sinker rig. Now, this is the most common rig used for catfishing of all. Now, you have your hook and your lead line. Now, when you're using lead lines, you always want to make them from a foot to two feet. Um, in some cases, you can possibly make them two and a half, three. But for the most part, what I do is from a foot to two feet. Now, up to that is your swivel barrel, your large bead, uh, and your no roll sinker or egg sinker or cannonball sinker, whichever one you want to use, and your main line. Now, most of the times when I'm using this rig, I like to use this just to get to the bottom dwellers. You know, um, this rig has proven many times to catch many fish. This is will be the rig that I use pretty much all the time when I'm fishing. And I can possibly say, even though I may use this rig most of the time, it is not the best rig that I have used I have to be all the way honest with that but it's the most efficient so you have to understand that being better don't mean efficient the reason why it's more more efficient because you can use this for cup bait live bait or you can actually uh, have a smaller weight actually and you can slip this on the bobber but mo for most part this is a great great rig overall efficiency of this is great and it's only because of the number of people who actually use this and have success. It's not my best rig, but it's my favorite rig. If I can't elaborate that enough, then I don't know what else I can say. But for the most part, this is always the go-to rig. Please do not let this rig down. Keep using it. It does wonders. And it catches your fish. And it just go-to rig. I mean, I don't know what else I can say about this. There's nothing bad to say about it. Now, I have another rig that I want to show y'all that's... Oh man, wonderful. It's a great rig. So stay tuned. We show you the last rig of the day. This is the three ray rig modified. Now, in this case, the lead line is longer than the actual weight. Now, now I'm gonna explain this uh, a little bit more with detail. Now you have your hook and your lead line. Now I don't know how long you will want to make yours. But just remember, always have it at least 5, 6 to 12 inches longer than your weight. You always want that hook to be 
down. The end of your hook should be 6 to 12 inches away from the weight. Now, I'm going to tell you why. Because with this rig, let's say it's in the water right now, and you got a live bait on it. This rig allows that bait to swim up and down, left and right. You see? Now, the reason why I like this rig better with live bait than I do with a regular Carolina rig or slip sinker rig is because it allows that bait to stay off the ground. Because one thing about the Carolina rig is when you're using that rig, what end up happening is the bait is on the ground and then the fish is just fluttering. Because most of the time, he's not going to even move that line. He's just going to flutter. And you want a fish to be able to move left and right, up and down. And this is the go-to rig for that. I can promise you this. You use this rig, you're going to have more hook set on your fish. I, watch. Mark my word. Watch what I tell you. Do not ever forget to use this rig. This is the... Look. And I don't even use it enough. And I don't know why. It's because... Nah, it's a deuce. Because I'm too lazy. I'm <laughs> hooking all them lines up to one. Sometimes you be like, ah, I don't want to do it later. But sometimes you got to put that laziness to the side and, and use a hook that's going to get you more fish. Um, I don't know what I can say about this rig, but it's the it's the best rig, period. Of any matter of fact, let's say you're fishing in high current. This is the rig because if you're using night crawlers or cut bait, that cut bait would be moving like this with the uh with the current. And it, and, it, and it looks so good to a fish, and then bam, there you go. You will have a fish strike it hard because with fast current, it makes them more aggressive because they're trying to get out the current, get the bait, go. And I can't even explain this enough. I mean, this is the rig to go to. And sometimes this rig is also good with no current because if you need that bait to sit at the bottom, uh, you can also get a fish that's more aggressive. And because he can't pull uh, the line like he could an original slip sinker rig or egg sinker rig, bam, he'll grab it, get stuck on that hook, boom, he's hooked fast. And this is why I like this rig. So please, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. You must, you must subscribe, man, for more content. I'm telling you, this page is growing. YouTube, uh, a lot of fish and like page on Facebook. It's doing something to me, and I'm hoping it's doing something for you. But please, this rig right here, this is the three-way rig. I call it the three-way modified rig with the sinker lower, well, shorter than the actual lead line. So you make sure y'all do this rig. I can never make this up. This is exactly what the rig, especially with live bait. It'll swim around, and I'm telling you, them flatheads will see that, and bam, you'll have a run like, you'll hear your line buzzing. For real, it'll move so fast that you might get uh, that you might get backlash in your reel. So I'm telling you this now. This is the rig to go to. If you think I'm lying, put it to work. Once again, nothing wrong with a lot of fishing TV. See you next time.